Greetings and welcome to a little garage update video or what is going to actually turn into perhaps a bit of a carbon fibre update video. In fact, I'm just not even going to go into the garage, I'm going to turn right around and get into the car because that is where the first piece of carbon, the first thing I want to talk about is. Okay, inside the car, looking right here at the steering wheel, um, going back quite a while at this point to many, many videos ago, um, you may remember that I put these on. Um, so we have this little bit here on both sides, and then down here we have this bit. Um, so these are from a brand called Tough Skins, and they are little like overlays. They're kind of like gel overlays with a strip of real carbon in the middle um so you know if you can catch it you know in the light um it looks like real carbon because it is real carbon um but then because it's just that one single layer and the rest is like a gel sticker thing they're like you know flexible so they're really easy to install um they come with like self-adhesive backing you just stick them on and you're good to go so today what i'm going to be doing is i'm actually going to be removing these and replacing these uh with something that you know in my opinion is an upgrade a step above you know like just better than this um so what I have is from a company called Red 5 Carbon Fiber. So I have one right here. Um, so what they do over at Red 5 is these are solid carbon. So, you know, like this is not just a like a gel overlay thing. So I have the bits uh, for going around, you know, the buttons here. And then I have the bit for uh, down here as well. Um, so another thing about these, apart from being, you know, full, real, genuine, solid carbon, um, is they sort of have like extra bits. So you can see that bit like goes all the way underneath there, um, as opposed to the tough skins, which just kind of stops dead. Um, and similarly, um, this bit down here, it's literally just along the top, uh, whereas the red five piece wraps all the way around and the other cool thing is that these are all made to order so i was able to spec obviously i wanted an rs logo kind of similar to what's there uh in the stock form and then i was able to you know request the exact color so i went with like the nitrous blue rs logo so this red 5 carbon is you know super high quality and i just think it looks absolutely fantastic because it's going to be more like properly covering and um, the other thing as well you know the likes of in here the tough skins doesn't have anything there which as you can see the red 5 goes all the way around it's just going to look better in general general um it's not going to have this sort of you know raised bumpy sort of look it's going to look like it's meant to be there and just look better in my opinion and yeah and the way that this is going to stick down um i have as you can see, I've, I've pre-applied some 3M VHB tape. Um, I'll show you the specific model number, I guess, uh, or product number of the 3M VHB tape because there are various different types of 3M VHB. Um, specifically, this one that I got, I'll flash it up on the screen which one it is. I got this one because uh, this is the thinnest one that I could see in the range. This is 0.6 millimeter thick, so it's like you know, very, very thin. Um, the regular or more commonly used stuff is like 1.1 millimeters thick. So half a mil doesn't really sound like a lot, but you know, whenever we're dealing with, you know, really, you know, tight sort of fine margins here, we want it to be as thin as possible to make it as seamless as possible. So yeah, then it's just a process of cutting it up, sticking it around and yeah, then we will peel that and get this stuck down. Um, obviously before I get this in place, I need to to remove what I currently have. I mean, it, sh it was pretty easy on. It should, hopefully, I think, it should just sort of like, you know, peel off the way that it went on. Yeah. So yeah, I just need to peel the rest of those remnants off, but yeah. 
those come off fairly easy uh, so yeah I need to peel all of them off uh, clean up the surfaces I'm also going to then give the leather of the steering wheel a really good cleaning condition uh, before I stick the new red 5 carbon bits on uh, just so that everything is nice clean and fresh and looks nice and new uh, whenever we get the new carbon installed so I'll get the rest of these carbon bits off then I will get to the cleaning and conditioning of the leather Okay, so I've got like this big massive microfiber cloth that I'm going to use uh, to wipe off the excess of the cleaner conditioner stuff, uh, but also sort of laying it out to protect stuff, you know, because whenever, you know, I'm cleaning this up, uh, you know, there can be a bit of like splashing. Uh, so the way that this works is real simple. I'm using uh, this product right here, which is called Revive Leather Foam from Carbon Collective. We just squirt that onto our leather cleaning brush, and then we just, in tight circular motion, uh, rub that in, uh, give it a good old scrub and that lifts out dirt and also then puts in nice conditioners into the leather and makes it look nice and new. So we have some of our foamy stuff and yeah we're literally just working it in. Yeah, so it's just like a bit of an elbow grease kind of thing. We just have to keep on going and going and going and going until we have achieved, um, you know, maximum amount of cleanage. Then we use the microfiber to wipe it up and then that will be the steering wheel cleaned and conditioned. Okay, so after having done that sort of top bit, we just grab our microfiber and sort of dry it off, I guess, remove the excess. It's pretty tough lighting conditions with the camera um, and getting this to come across on camera, but the leather, like, it just looks really, really nice. Like, before there was some shiny aspects of it, uh, which people think is, like, wear and tear, and it can be, um, but um, most of the time, actually, the shininess in leather is actually coming from, like, oils and stuff that have been ingrained in from, like, use, like, from your hands. Um, and what this foam, this leather cleaning and conditioning foam, um, does is it pulls that out um, so you get that sort of factory sort of matte look to it again which I think looks really nice and it also smells really good as well um, so yeah I just need to continue do the rest of the steering wheel with this and then we'll be ready to move back to getting our carbon bits installed so just trying to capture a little bit of a before shot up close on this piece of leather that is slightly shiny from oils and dirt from the hands over time so then I will do the cleaning condition and show it after. So there we are then. It looks just like new, like it is so, so nice. Nice to the look and also nice to the feel as well. It feels a lot different whenever it is nice and clean and conditioned. There we are then. That is the leather of the steering wheel looking absolutely wonderful. I mean, I don't want to use the word magic, but that stuff really is just brilliant. Um, so yeah, now we can move back. Uh, and I need to uh, just do a quick little surface prep on here. I mean, just by default, you know, I mean, they just got a bit of a rub and a clean down anyway. Uh, but we need to just make sure that these surfaces right here that we're going to be sticking to are, you know, nicely, you know, prepped to receive the 3M VHB. And for that, I'm going to use G Technic panel wipe and then I have got a microfiber here but I'm literally just going to wrap it around my finger and put a little dab of it just on the tip of the finger um, so that I can be you know super precise and we really don't need to be using much of this at all it's literally just these tight little areas that we're going to be applying the 3M VHB just so that we get maximum adhesion. Okay, first one then, I've got the backing uh, removed from all of the 3M tape bits that I have applied here. Um, so yeah, it's gonna have to go slightly like underneath the lip here um, of the airbag cover. So it'll be like sort of in and then down um, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I just have to work it in there and then apply some pressure in order to stick it down. And there we are, first one in place. The fitment is exact like you know it's so much more of an exact fit than the tough skins even was uh, which I didn't even really notice until doing this um, so yeah it's a really nice neat job in my opinion so yeah I just need to repeat that obviously I had to put the camera down I needed both hands in 
order to do that. Um, but yeah, just getting it lined up, press it down, hold it down as long as you can comfortably um, so that it, you know, there's good pressure to get that bond from the VHB. But yeah, really, really nice. All right, there we go. So that's the second one. So that is both of these ones done. Okay, so I've left this bottom piece to last and that is because it's not quite as simple as these other bits in terms of, you know, just sticking it on. We actually need to remove this middle like bit of trim in order to have this fit. Um, because of the way that Red 5 have done these, they matched it to the shape like underneath this. So you have to remove it. You know, if you try and put it on like this, it won't go all the way in. Um, so yeah, we need to get a trim tool and remove this. So there we go, needed a couple of trim tools in the end. Um, it's obviously, you know, tight enough in there. So without, you can kind of see how it was secured in there. There's like a couple little prong things around the back and then like these sort of like clippy things are like clicked into, you know, sort of gaps or whatever. Uh, but anyway, that is out. So now we can get our Red 5 carbon piece that goes over the entirety of this and get that installed. And there we go. So if we zoom out a bit, we can start to see the steering wheel has come together real real nice upgraded with proper carbon i mean the tough skin stuff was cool but this is obviously just you know the real 100 percent deal um and i think it looks great um fits well really tight tolerances the leather is looking great the combination the package just looks excellent i'm very happy with that so let's move on Okay, so moving into the actual garage, here we are at something that might be familiar from the last garage update video. It is, of course, the carbon fiber spoiler lip from Mountain. So, if you remember from the last garage update video, the clear coat was starting to fail on this. Uh, so, I removed it with a view to then removing the clear coat um, and then, like, you know, getting new clear coat on there, sort of doing a proper refurb job with actually good clear coat coat um, that isn't going to feel in the same way hopefully um, but yeah um, here we are basically where I'm at with this is I'm almost finished removing the clear coats so it was a pretty long drawn out arduous process I really was trying to be as careful as I could um, because you know you don't want to damage the weave underneath um, so I really took my time which ended up being quite a lot of time um, but I got there in the end, got all of the clear coat off, um, and then I've just most recently been doing some very light sanding. In fact, I've just got a little bit left to do with this uh, 2000 grit right here. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing just to finish this off. Um, it looks really quite cool um, without any clear coat on there. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Um, you can really like, you know, see the glinting of the weave um, really clearly. It looks really, really nice nice and groovy but obviously we need to have a protective clear coat on there we can't just put it on like this um, so yeah um, it looks pretty cool now that isn't the entirety of the story since the last garage update video with regards to this um, whenever I did some social media posts uh, Mountain actually reached out to me um, and asked if I had you know contacted their customer service team or whatever about the issue um, to which of course I replied no because you know it I made it pretty clear last time that you know this is well out of the standard warranty which of course is one year um, so like I didn't bother asking them anything because I didn't really see the point uh, being out of warranty what are they gonna do I think you know to be honest they wanted to perhaps limit negative publicity perhaps um, so what they ended up doing was they ended up like selling me another one of these like a brand new one um, for a massively reduced price now um, 
I don't know if they're offering the same service to like everyone. I mean, they totally should be. You know, I'm not a special person. I'm just a consumer like the rest of you out there. So, you know, hopefully if, um, you know, you have one of these, it goes bad, you know, even outside of warranty, you reach out to Mountain and they should help you. They should sort you out. If indeed you want to buy another one, um, take that risk. Um, so like I went for it, you know, you know, partly because of the massively just price, um, but also it had crossed my mind that you know it you know obviously this has taken a long time and it would be nice to get the car back to you know where it was you know to get it on again um but obviously i'm not finished this uh so i had thought originally it would be good to get another one and sort of do like a tandem you know get the other one on and then take my time get this one you know properly and nicely refurred and then whenever the new one like ultimately breaks down with its clear coat then you know swap them out again that was like an old plan of mine but they never had any stock whenever i thought about it originally um but um they've obviously got some stock and they made that offer to me so I decided to go back to that original plan um, so yeah I have the other one inside the house I don't have it um, installed yet so I'll jump inside the house and show you that right now so here we are then this is the new one um, obviously I mean it looks brand new. Um, I have already done a layer of Crystal Serum Light from G-Technic ceramic coating on this, um, which has actually darkened it down a bit. Um, it was quite light. They, I don't know if they've made some changes uh, to the clear coat on these more recent ones. Obviously, mine is a few years old at this point, or the original is a few years old at this point. This one is brand new. Um, but I mean, what, I mean, one thing that I did notice, which is a positive, my original on this underside, um, even like from brand new, like it wasn't like an over time degradation of the clear coat um, on the underside where I noticed there was like little like pits, you know, little like dots essentially all the way along it. Um, where you know the clear coat had went into the little holes but then you could still see the little holes um that is not the case here this is you know solid uh which is obviously better that's what you want so i mean i, I don't know if they you know made changes and improved on you know the original way that they you know clear coated these or whatever or if i just got a you know not great one the last time or something i'm not quite sure um but yeah i mean this one seems okay um and we'll see how it does ultimately once we get it installed so yeah, that's that. That's ready to go on. Um, the weather is extremely changeable at the minute, so that's why I haven't got it actually on. But maybe before I get this video edited and put up, um, I will get this on, and if so, I will put some footage of it on there in. All right, before I even got to editing the video, I actually managed to get the clear onto the carbon, and it looks real nice. It looks actually really, really good, to be honest. Um, let's try and get up close. You can really uh, see the weave. I think you can see the weave a lot better with this clear coat, with this um, super high gloss clear coat, uh, much better than you could like with the original Mountain clear coat that was kind of, you know, sort of satiny. This looks real, real good, I think. Um, this is 24 hours after spraying. There is, of course, a little bit of orange peel, which is absolutely normal after spraying some clear. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, of course, it's, like I say, there's a bit more work to do. Sort out the orange peel, finish it off properly. But yeah, looking good so far. All right, so the saga of the mountain carbon spoiler lit thing continues. So this one is the one that they sent me, the, the new one, and this is the old one um, that we're calling it, um, the one that I have now pretty much finished refurbishing uh, with a nice new clear coat. So as I said previously, I was going to install this new one and then, you know, finish off the refurb work on this and then, you know, sit on this until such a time as the clear coat on this one inevitably went wrong. Um, but whenever I went to install it, I found it doesn't fit, um, believe it or not. Um, and a couple of things that, you know, point towards a potential bait and switch, if you like, um, that Mountain seem to have done on these, like, more recent ones. Um, so one thing that um, really stood 
figured out whenever I was installing it um, was that these new ones are actually not as wide as the old ones. Um, interestingly, there is like a couple of comments that I've seen in the past um, that people didn't like about these, that they didn't go all the way to the edges, all the way to the sides of the, you know, the bit of the spoiler that they were covering, um, which, you know, it never really bothered me too much. It would be pretty difficult to make something that was the exact width, um, so I never really was too bothered. But whenever I was putting this new one on, I noticed that it was like several millimeters shorter, um, which is noticeable whenever you're doing it. So, okay, starting on this side, I've got the short faces like mat lined up matching each other. Just to get that exact. So those are matching each other on this side. So then if I go over then to the other side, what you will see is, do do do. That's a good three or so millimeters um, less wide. Um, that is noticeable um, on the car. It just doesn't look so good. Um, but then the other thing that um, really got me was that um, whenever I was trying to push this on um, these like carved out bits at the side um, no matter what I did no matter how hard I pushed on this um, it would not meet the back of the spoiler um, and you know initially I thought I must have been doing something wrong uh, but then I took it off um, meticulously removed all of the goop um, which was really annoying and then went and got this one because at that time I had um, just finished doing the clear coat and I lined it up and the old one does still match up so there's something about this new one that is incorrectly done it's badly sized it's basically faulty from the factory um, what I suspect because it's demonstrably shorter um, and the fact that it doesn't like meet up properly I'm going to guess that they have used a different mold a mold that isn't the right perfect size for these new ones and interestingly as well one thing I did notice um, the old ones had this little sticker on um, that um, said who the actual manufacturer was because obviously Mountain don't make anything themselves the old ones were made in a factory in Mexico I can't remember the name of the company I think I mentioned it in a previous video um, but these new ones um, or this new one at least um, had no such stickers so um, the differences the fact that this doesn't line up right um, just suggests to me that Mountain have went and tried to get as close an approximation to the old ones as possible from a different factory uh, and it's just been a bad job I'm assuming probably to do with you know cutting costs um, but evidently cutting costs means cutting corners uh, because this is not fit for purpose. So I am sending this back to Mountain. Um, I'm not very happy with them at all. Um, and yeah, because I mean, originally I didn't even, I wasn't even gonna mention anything. I wasn't even gonna like contact Mountain at all about this. I was just gonna do my refurb work. Um, but it was them that wanted to have a reasonable resolution. Um, but apparently their reasonable resolution is to do the bait and switch and send me a piece of crap that is absolutely useless whilst also taking my money. And on that, another kick to the face is that they want me to pay for like the return of this which is just shockingly bad customer service um, so yeah I mean I just cannot wait to get rid of this piece of crap and get this away and revert back uh, to doing my own refurb with a proper clear coat a proper job and getting my old one back on nice refurb looking better than ever so that's what I am doing now and just whenever I mention a bait and switch um, this is like the little bag of stuff that they give you. This is what they say um, they want you to stick it on with. Um, VTEC Auto Sealer. Um, basically RTV, like gasket maker type stuff. Uh, like, I'm, I'm sure it's okay, but this is like way cheaper and way less like motorsport grade than the stuff that they gave whenever I got the original one. This is definitely a cheaper switch out um, to a cheaper product, you know, so that they can increase their profits than what they used to give. Um, so that's another thing, but there you go. So there you are, that's the garage update, the carbon update or whatever you want to call it. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe for more content to come very, very soon. Thank you once again and I'll see you later. Bye.